Okay, so to begin with, we'll start at home. We'll start with AIMS South Africa, followed by AIMS Senegal. And instead of AIMS Ghana, we will go for AIMS Rwanda because of the delay with the AIMS Ghana Center President. So AIMS South Africa, the stage is yours. Thank you very much, everyone. It takes a village to raise a child. And in the next half hour, there will be a whole village on the stage. So I'll speak for a few minutes, and then a number of AIMS staff from AIMS South Africa will tell you um, what we are doing and a bit of our story. Um, and let's see if that clicker works. I'm, I'm doing that re uh, real time. <laughs> Oops, it's. Um, There we go. I'm not going to reiterate again, but we have, um, uh, when I give a talk about AIMS, I, <laughs> everyone always attributes it to Nelson Mandela. So Neil, you probably have a bit more work to do. But yes, education is the most powerful weapon that you can use to change the world. And that is why we do what we do. And I'll just tell a few things uh, to you about AIMS South Africa. This um, institute was launched just over 20 years ago, on the 18th of September in 2003, a number of dignitaries, including Minister Kader Asmal, was here to open the Ames uh, Center. Ames was not birthed on its own. It took the work of six universities coming together and partner partnering. It grew out of a partnership between the University of Cape Town, the University of Stellenbosch, the University of the Western Cape, uh, Cambridge, Oxford, and then Paris Sud, which is now uh, uh, rebranded. Um, before I joined AIMS, I spoke to a number of alumni and asked them what AIMS South Africa is. And the best quote that I could find about AIMS South Africa is from uh, Emily Miller. And she described AIMS as the monastery for mathematics. If you're a monk and you live in a monastery, you never leave. You eat <laughs> and you study <laughs> and you sleep in exactly the same place. So for all our students, this is the monastery of mathematics. You eat, live, study, and work here in the same place. It's incredibly intense, but that is, I think, exactly what makes it such a unique and special environment. Um, we are Pan-African um, at nature, and if you walk around our center, you'll see some artwork. Um, we're trying to be an African art and design center as well under the hoods. Um, you'll see the uh, textiles from the Democratic Republic of Congo called Kuba textiles, so they're from the Kuba tribe. They are Bogolan mud-dyed textiles that come from Mali, and then we have some wire baskets from uh, KwaZulu-Natal in South Africa. In AIM South Africa, we teach a course called Math and Art in Africa. And if you study topology and uh, wallpaper groups, you'll know that there are 17 kinds of rotational groups. Um, and I'll just quote from Wikipedia. In the art, the Kuba have developed all the geometric possibilities of repetitive variations of border patterns and of the 17 ways that the design can be repe repetitively varied on a surface or wallpaper groups, as if you're a mathematician, the Kuba have used 12 of these. And so we welcome you to just look at our artwork and experience and appreciate the mathematics behind artwork in Africa. This is what uh, our center looks like now. Um, uh, we are close to the beach, and some of our students dip their toes into the water. Most of them dip their toes into mathematics. Lastly, I'll just speak to you about the future of AIMS South Africa. Um, and our, our hope. Um, 20 or 30 years ago, there was a big difference um, between the work that people do in artificial intelligence and machine learning, what, which was a cottage industry by all means, and science and scientific discovery. Um, if, you, if you look at this as two Venn diagrams, these two things didn't intersect. Um, over the years, this intersection became bigger and bigger um, and uh, it really hit home to me when the first papers were published to show that uh, one could fold proteins in silico, um, 
as in on a computer with AI technology. So um, four years ago, this is what you had to do if you were to work in medicine and you had to figure out how a protein folds. You had to use X-ray crystallography, you had to use NMR, you had to use a large number of very expensive techniques and you had to do it experimentally in a lab and it was ridiculously expensive. So over the last 60 years, around 170,000 structures of proteins have been figured out how they fold. Um, um, and it was only two years ago when an AI tool um, came on the scene that predicts how proteins fold and solve this incredibly difficult mathematical biolo biological problem. Um, and this data point sits in this intersection of AI and scientific discovery. Um, so in this intersection, we've got weather prediction, protein folding, traditional algorithms, mathematical proofs, and here's a slide that I've taken from the State of AI report. Um, this shows the, um, the influence of AI as a growing field in all areas of science. Um, I won't read the numbers and the details to you, but you can see that there is an ex incredibly strong and it will be exponential trend in, in this intersection growing. And so what should we do about this as an institute and a large institute across Africa? One, one of the responses we have in South Africa is that we launched a new AI for Science stream that particularly teaches students to work at this intersection, and it's in partnership with um, um, the Square Kilometer Array, because we have a big telescope, a really big telescope in the, in the desert in South Africa. It's in partnership with teams who work in epidemiology. The team who sequenced the Omicron COVID variant are partners in this, and they are partners in uh, ecology, because uh, we really care about conservation here. Um, so you think I'm all about AI, uh, I just want to close my part with this slide. Um, we love traditional mathematics. I walk around and whenever I see a blackboard that contains an interesting proof, I take a picture and I've got a long, long list of images on my phone. Um, this is Wick's theorem. Um, it's used to compute different cumulants in an expansion. Uh, you can illustrate what's on this blackboard with Feynman diagrams that show how different things appear and disappear. Uh, it's a very complicated mathematical construct and it's on my phone to, uh, as, as uh, sort of, as a, like a child um, seeing something on a blackboard, wishing that uh, you could have been in the lecture yourself. Um, so lastly, um, as someone who directs AIM South Africa, our students live my dream. I sit in the office doing emails, and then I, um, I see what our students do, and I'm envious for every student at Ames, <laughs> because you learn really, really cool stuff. But with that, I'll hand over. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. It's my great pleasure to introduce myself. I'm Karen Therese Howell. I am the academic director that was recently appointed for mathematical sciences. And I want to tell you a little bit about my academic journey that brought me to Ames. So I came to Ames for the first time around about 2015. I was invited to lecture a course in um, algebraic methods, which I loved. I didn't know what to expect. I was asked to put together a course that normally would span about six months at university, squashed into three weeks, and there were students coming from all over Africa. And I felt completely overwhelmed and frightened, but there was a bit of anticipation. And I came and I fell in love with this place. So the love for Ames was fostered many, many years ago. And every year where I could fit it into my academic program, I came back. And every year I spend many happy moments teaching students here, walking to the beach, just getting to know them, having lunch together, working together in a collaborative space. So I chose some of the pictures um, just to show you what some of this journey has looked like. So at the end of each group, there's um, the photo that we take on the steps. I've got several of those that I treasure. 
Um, and many of those students still keep in contact and they spread across the world doing um, very inspiring things. Um, and on the right, I also wanted to highlight just some of the visitors that came with. So this particular year was uh, very exciting. We had a visitor from Australia that I met at the Women in Mathematics Conference in Adelaide that um, I invited here, uh, Jess Avzali, and she taught um, a course in graph theory and also attended the algebraic course here. And she still fondly remembers her time at Ames. And whenever I have contact with her, she writes and asks, how is Ames? How are things going here? And she was very excited when I informed her that I am starting as academic director. And I also want to highlight one of the students there, uh, Josephine, who I'll also speak to a bit later when I connected to the alumni, which I think is the next slide. So picking alumni was really tricky because I could keep you here with many stories. But I picked one in specific, um, and I picked it because it connects to uh, my research area. So in 2018, I supervised Sorgo Pearsonon's master's um, thesis in near vector spaces. We met in 2015 at Ames, and from the moment I met him, I was absolutely blown away by his brilliance and the questions that he's asked, his engagement, his passion for mathematics. And I invited him to come to Stellenbosch, so I supervised his Ames project, and then invited him and he came to do his masters at Stellenbosch. Um, I have some photos of him. Uh, we also formed an algebra group um, and all of us worked together on some problems. But what I do want to share with you is uh, Sorgu always had this habit of walking in after we had discussed some research and gone and digested it and he would come the next day and he would say, there's a problem. <laughs> and it was always with a lot of worry and concern that we may have missed something. And so I would say to him, no, Sorgu, we need to reframe this. It is a challenge and we love challenges. And this continued for about a year or two in his masters, he would walk in, he would say, there's a problem. Um, and just before he left, because in the end he got a bursary to go and do a PhD at Kaiserslautern, uh, which of course I was very excited about, but also sad at the same time. Just before he left, he turned and he said, it's a challenge. It's always, <laughs> it's always a challenge. Um, so it's a lovely story just of a journey that started at Ames, that took him to Stellenbosch. He went to Kaiserslautern, did his PhD, and he's now working at the intelligence agency in Germany. Uh, so he's just one of several stories I could have picked, but um, it's one of my favorite ones. And just in terms of the research questions he asked during his masters, we have so many that we can still look at in my own research area that he's left almost as a gift to the area. Um, so I just wanted to end by sharing that with you. So thank you for your time. Good morning, everyone. It's a great pleasure to be here. I am Claire. I am uh, the academic director of the AI for Science program. I'm also new, like uh, Karine, appointed this academic year. And um, take... yep, this one one year ago, actually, exactly one year ago, I was in a gap year. I decided to take a, a leave of absence from a university in Canada to, to Africa, and I visited the five Ames, and I had a longer stay at Ames uh, South Africa to be a tutor and then a lecturer. So I knew these two roles before being in the role where I am now, and it was incredibly enriching. As a tutor, I could see actually all the things as tutors we can actually learn. So even tutoring at Ames, it's, it's actually a program, it's a school, you can learn so many things. And as a lecturer, uh, Ames actually in, allowed me to basically uh, train myself deeply in AI the way I want it. I come from particle physics, I use AI in my research, but never had the time to just stop all of the frantic life as an academic. Some people may recognize that uh, life in a university is pretty frantic. And here I could do this. I could design the lecture that I, was, I had dream for and teach it in a dream place. So this course, uh, Introduction to Machine Learning, was shaped since its infancy for the AIMS format. And I really want 
want to stress that the amazing flexibility that AIMS is allowing for lecture is actually a training ground for them to go into some university with some more constraint, but at least you can do what you want. You can experiment and the students, they love it. So that was really fantastic to be able to just go and definitely check with some people at AIMS, is it okay to do this? Oh yeah, but you can do this. So it's really a way to experiment new methods of teaching here on top of teaching uh, the topic that I that really had at heart. And here we go, after that, I just got appointed as an academy director in AI. So, okay, this is really thanks to the AIMS. AIMS is uh, propelling students, propelling tutors, propelling lectures as well. And this is important to mention. I, as I'm new and we're celebrating 20 years of, of history, I would definitely do like Karen and showcase alumni. And uh, there is a, a colleague and friend of mine, Chilufia, uh, from Zambia, who was there in 2011, 2012, and she's now a postdoc working at the Large Hadron Collider, based at CERN, mother of two. Fantastic personality, and she's really trying, we will try to go to Zambia and trying to, to kickstart some efforts uh, there. And you can see she's crediting AIMS as really the component of her journey. And uh, what is fantastic to see is that now the area where I'm from, experimental particle physics with the Large Hadron Collider at CERN, there are more Africans coming in. It's getting there, it's getting there, and AIMS is due to a large part to this. They bring diversity, they bring another way to think, and in science, if we gather the same type of people in the room, we will not get the original ideas that we need to foster discovery. The other alumni is a bit more recent, and Wangi from Kenya, she was here last year, I had her as a student, and uh, I had to write a reference letter for this internship in, in Japan, this research, and she got it, and she went to Japan. And honestly, I, she sent me for this slide, she was so happy, she sent me so many pictures and so many quotes, it's shorter, I don't have time. And in the end, I took this one when she's looking at a completely new landscape for her. She has never been to only Kenya, South Africa, and then Japan. And, and she did this nice quote, like I, I could see the, 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 the coaching that we give to our students to be very uh, <laughs> um, um, elevator speech in terms of, of their quotes. Uh, uh, the, 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 yeah, it was, it was hard to just cut all of her story. It's amazing to see the type of things we can foster where then, and I'm going to be honest, we're not having, a, okay, let's just help to get Africa, no. It's it's a partnership where we'll have an exchange and there will be some African in Japan and Japanese coming and then African in Europe and European comings in here. And this is where we realize, ah, it's getting there. Thank you so much. Hello everyone. So it's my pleasure to speak a little bit about the um, Ames Research Center. My name is Emmanuel. I'm a resident researcher and I'm the Ames Carnegie Junior Research Chair. In uh, May 2008, uh, with the support of various funders and individuals, a major milestone was achieved um, with the opening of the new Ames Research Center. Two historical uh, double-story buildings just across the road from us were purchased and refurbished. Um, and Ames has ho hosted a lot of research fellows over the years. So you can um, take a look at the map. Those are some of the research fellows that we've hosted and where they're from. Um, Ames has also hosted um, visitors from all over the planet, um, including, I'll just list a few of them, uh, University of Botswana, Oxford University, University of Uwande, University of Kansas, University of York, University of Maryland, University of New South Wales, and, and many more. So we've had a lot of visitors over the years. And Ames's research interest um, can be described as mathemat mathematical modeling in a multidisciplinary context. And the research interests have varied over the years. Um, in 2011, there was a, an increase in uh, research interest in financial mathematics and uh, cosmology. In 2014, uh, researchers worked in multi-criteria optimization and bioinformatics. In 2017, there was a lot of focus on machine learning, uh, cosmology, and astronomy, as well as applied mathematics and computer science. And presently, there's a focus in ecology, as well as algebra and topology. 
Um, I want to highlight one of the research groups at Ames. Um, so the Machine Learning for Ecology Research Group um, is a fairly new group at Ames, uh, which I head as the Ames Carnegie Junior Chair. Um, and the group so far has graduated 16 students, 10 of them with distinctions. Um, our group has presented um, our work at various local and international events, including ICLR, WWF, um, at Cambridge University, events in France, Rwanda, Czech Republic, and Portugal. The group has strong on ongoing collaborations with leading ecologists um, at the uh, University of Lisbon, Imperial College London, and um, St. Andrews University, as well as the University of Cambridge. So our group focuses on the development of machine learning algorithms um, to deal with wildlife conservation. And we focused on a number of critically endangered species, um, such as the critically endangered Heinen gibbon, which is the world's rarest primate, the critically endangered black and white ref lima, um, which can be found in Madagascar, the endangered, um, sorry, the vulnerable Theolo alifi from Malawi, the endangered Indian ocean humpback dolphin found in the South African waters, and various other endangered species around the world. Um, we're collaborating with various organizations, such as the Two Oceans Aquarium here in Cape Town, to monitor the endangered African penguin, um, which could uh, be extinct by 2035. And we achieved this monitoring using artificial intelligence applied to sound recorders, uh, camera data, video data, as well as accelerometry data. Um, so we're really driven to equip our students with the most innovative approaches for conservation. Uh, we're amongst the few institutions in the world to teach AI methodologies for conservation. Recently, we took our AI students to the field um, to record some environmental sounds and sounds of birds. Uh, the picture at the top shows a spectrogram, which you can think of as a visualization of sound. Um, and the signal you can see is a vocalization of a pintailed wider, uh, which is a bird found in, in Cape Town. <laughs> that's not the, <laughs> that's not the bird. <laughs> uh, so the students learned how to build AI tools to address these problems and to de detect the bird call. And here's a picture of some of the students um, using some of the hardware that we taught them how to build in class and how to use uh, AI to address uh, these conservation issues. So now I'll hand over back to Professor Howell um, to present some exciting new directions in the research center. Right, so I've been trying to contain my excitement about this for weeks. So it's really hard to follow up and get people excited about research when someone like Emmanuel has spoken about penguins and saving penguins. <laughs> Granted, um, I'm here to share some very exciting news with you. Uh, Professor David Holgate is upstairs, so he's not able to join, but I'm standing in for both of us to announce a new research focus at the Ames Research Center. It will be called At Ames, and it's going to be focused on algebra and topology. Uh, so David Holgate will have a joint research chair that's a collaboration between UWC and Ames. I have academic rank at Stellenbosch University, so they will be involved. Any students that I supervise as part of the algebraic arm will be registered at Stellenbosch University, and David's students will be registered at UWC. Uh, if you know about David's work, you know that he has had very successful Topology for Tomorrow workshops that have had students and academics engaged and excited about topology. And this is a continuation of that work and extending into algebra. Our aim is to produce high quality research in algebra as well as algebraic biology, which is a new focus area that I'm very interested in. It views algebraic problems, um, sorry, it takes algebraic tools and looks at biological problems through an algebraic lens. We aim to supervise students, host collaborators, and organize workshops. In short, we want to get you excited about topology and algebra at Ames. Thank you.
Hi, uh, good morning everyone. Um, my name is Zenobia Kenny and I'm the academic manager at, the, um, at AIMSET, which is just across the road here. Um, um, I was born in, in a township on the Cape Flats and so just, having, just being here and working here is not something that I ever imagined would be possible. I absolutely loved mathematics and fortunately for me, I had the most amazing teachers that assisted me. And when I did my degree in mathematics, um, I had the choice of either furthering the mathematics, but I actually fell in love with, with the teaching and learning of mathematics. And as much as I would want to stand here today and tell you that I'm all into those postgraduate things, I'm really passionate about young people and trying to get those young people to understand the beauty and the, that special part of mathematics that I fell in love with. And because of my close connection with, with the community, I've, I've, I'm living my passion here, here at Ames. And I started in about um, 2013 at Ames, and just prior to that, I'd come to the beach and, 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 and come down one of these side roads, uh, Melrose Road. I'd never seen, um, I didn't know there was an institute at all. And I kind of put my head against the window and I thought, I wonder what goes on inside here. It sounds like so it's intriguing and it's something to do with maths. I wish I could work here. And I'm here today. So I started in 2013. And in a way that, you know, I've decided to describe um, aim sex journey in three decades. And the first decade, like a, like a child, you know, you're starting to walk, you're falling around, you have tantrums. Um, and so we started talking to key players. We were talking about change in the education system. There was a needs analysis done at the time, just after apartheid. And there was a big focus on teacher training. And so we started with our first courses at AIMSEC with a lot of international interest and a lot of international support. And our focus in the first 10 years was just to look at the mathematics in schools. And that's just where we were when we turned 10. In the second decade, we became teenagers from our tweens to our teens. And we started thinking we actually quite are growing up now and we've got to do quite big big people's things. We started forming partnerships with universities. The colleges had closed down in South Africa and the responsibility of teacher training became um, that of the universities. And the universities were not familiar with what actually goes on in schools. They were so accustomed to pre-service teachers. So we um, jumped in there and we started focusing on delivering um, training which would which would um, promote the professional qualifications. So the government introduced professional qualifications alongside academic qualifications, and we um, supported universities in offering some of the courses. And at that time, we were, okay, do we now work with teachers? Do we learn with work, uh, work with um, learners? Or do we actually work with both? Um, just to say, uh, we've put this slide in, that there's been such a lot of investment in teacher education um, across the world. And when I saw this graph for the first time, I, th I thought to myself, yeah, right, they probably just um, comparing us to Europe or the America. And then I looked a bit closer and said, hey, hang on a minute, what's going on here? We've got some African countries here, and let's see where South Africa's lying. So there's such a lot of money um, put into uh, uh, mathematics and science at school level um, in South Africa. And where my arrow points, uh, we can see that, you know, not sh we, we still don't have um, those high test scores. So it's kind of concerning for me as somebody who's pas passionate about, about young people. So I've had to really look at things, and I'm already on my third decade, thank you very much. And um, we need to start looking at our partnerships um, very differently. And so we start asking ourselves different questions. And I'm saying, what if we could work directly with learners and introduce them the cutting edge science? I mean, if I think of myself in a classroom as a teacher, I'm not really thinking about cutting edge science, am I? I'm thinking about delivering the curriculum. So maybe it's time for us 
not to focus on the teachers and go straight to the learners. And I was privileged yesterday to work with some kids from Kailicha. Um, first of all, I was quite surprised that they had a coding club. And I thought, I mean, how lucky can I be? And we taught these young people in partnership with SAP how to construct the first algorithm. And from that algorithm, we had our little USBs, popped it into a sewing machine, and with the support of SAP, we could take African art to another level. So we embroidered all these wonderful creations that these youngsters had made, 15-year-olds, and um, there'll be two of them here on Thursday to show you some of their work. So it's absolutely fantastic in what we could do by working directly with the learners. Um, of course, um, we are going to influence African policy. I've put the question mark there, but it's going to happen. And um, I'm certainly thinking about offering um, a, a transdisciplinary mathematics um, master's program at, at AIMS, thinking about the intersection of society, what it is to be human with mathematics, because I think that is also something needed on the continent. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for my fellow colleagues for sharing what we offer here at AIMS. So I'm here to take off the head of the MC and then I'll tell you one more thing that we offer here at AIMS, which is science communication and women advancement. And we had this morning when Professor Turok showed us his business plan and then he also sh shared with us how it was difficult to talk to people that's the reality, that's our everyday scientist reality of how do we communicate with other people, not in, with, with, in, in, a, in academic space. So AIMS, over the years, we realized this need where we have these public lectures, exciting, right? Inviting scientists, but not everybody can stand in the stage and deliver uh, science to the audience. So we realize that we are also sending our students to community. We are, as, we are saying, students go to the community, talk to people about the mathematics. What is the problem there? We are setting them to failure because our university system, it doesn't equip us as well-rounded scientists. Yes, we get education, but then where are these skill sets, soft skills that can separate us from other academicians. So we realized over the years that AIMS, we have a good model to train our students, top lecturers, brilliant students. What else is missing is the science communication component. So we realized that we need to put together a framework to train them, not just in mathematics, but then to prepare them to go out to the field. So effective communication is one of our unique offering at AIMS because we realize that across the African landscape, this is the, the gap. And it's not just the gap amongst academics. I'm glad we are sitting with the policy makers. There is a problem there. You are saying scientists must communicate, but where are the resources to do that? Where are the trainings to do that? So there is a gap that we need to fill, and we were fortunate here in South Africa in 2015 to even launch a science communication strategy. And that strategy, it enforced scientists to communicate. But then the question is, where should we get the skills as scientists to communicate? And I go back to my PhD uh, journey where I produced this nice thesis in approximation theory, and there there was a German science slam competition. And after PhD, you sweat six years, and then now you want to communicate that result, theorem. I entered that competition. It was a 10 minutes pitch where you have policymakers, students, public. I have to sell what I did. It was the most difficult uh, task that I ever did because what I was working on is a field called subdivision that is used in animation. So you see now this animation advanced uh, Pixar movie nowadays is because of the advanced mathematics that we are doing. 
People wanted to know that, but I was rocking with this theorem. Who cares? So I was challenged from there now to reflect to myself as a mathematician, but also other mathematician, to really, let's ask ourselves, is it enough for us to sit with all this paper we are producing? How do we inspire the next generation if we can't communicate with them? We talked about this morning how we need to change Africa. How do we change a girl in a rural village without taking a scientist's head and go to that village? Sinobia talk about township, not far from Ames. You, Ames student, how do you, with your knowledge so far, go there and change the lives of young people? So we thought science communication is the key, but another element that sits in our academic system throughout the world and Africa is not an exception on this. It's a woman advancement. It's everywhere in business sectors. So at AIMS, we realize that we really, if we have to transform mathematical landscape in Africa, we will have to have equal parts part in, the, in the transformation. So we are committed and we create capacity building. And this capacity building, it needs to be holistic. Follow up to Panalomi, it needs to focus on Afrocentricity because these are Africans who need to change Africa. So this is the program I was talking about where we develop for our students. It's a, we are delivering it with African Gong, which is a pan-African uh, center of uh, science communication. And then we have been delivering here since 2020, started during COVID. So, and we are grounded because AIMS is a pan-African institute. We also embed Afrocentricity on how we approach this because after all, if we train these students to go out to the community, who are they communicating to? Africans, right? So we also uh, in, uh, encourage learning by doing. So it's one thing for us to stand here, but student, we need to tell, uh, train them to to, 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 to do it if you want to send them out to, there to the community. And then we also have to take into consideration excellent awards. Academician, we write these papers having sleepless night, and somewhere I think there is still less of recognition. So we hope that through science communication, this is another expect, uh, aspect that we are adding on academicians who are teaching, who are doing research. So there must be an, a part of award and recognition. So I just want to share you these two critical out outcomes that I think is important uh, for our students. So after a workshop, we challenge the student. It's not just three-day workshop, but then you have to do as you say. So you must go back to your communities. This was Trevo from UKZN, so we ask students, you are a mathematician, reflect back to your community. How can you solve any social problem using the, the, the mathematics that you, 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 you have? So Trevo, he was doing a project in network theory. He realized that in his hometown, taxi rank, uh, you know the taxis when you are driving here, everybody say they are a problem, but we have to find a solution. So he designed a concept with them just to help them how to navigate, uh, save well, save the distance. So that's what they delivering. And I also have Tandiwe from Swaziland. Tandiwe, it was during COVID where you conceptualized a project where there was COVID, there was vaccine misconception, church, beliefs, and then she conceptualized a project using net network theory to her community. So imagine you're a scientist, you have to talk about vaccine to the congregate. So that was a challenge for her, but what was important was that she was able to deliver the project, and how many lives was, were they saved then? It was massive. So AIMS is not just about training students to be scientists, it's also about changing lives as we can see in there. And when we hope that our students, when they go back to their community, they become driver, we see the leadership, not just as a mathematician, but as a leader in their community, taking charge of those social programs and showcasing that they are part of the solution. 
So women advancement, it's my last slide. So we believe that if we have to do this uh, to advance women, it's not just AIMS problem, it's not South African problem, it's not African problem, it needs everybody, international partner. So this is WOFIRA, which is Women Advancement Forum that was started uh, through the dead dad uh, exchange program. And here what we are saying is that if we are training our female leaders, future leaders, let's make it holistic. So if we have an international exchange from South Africa to Germany to Canada, are our females equipped to adapt with the social, social cultural uh, background there? If we have females from other countries to South Africa, are we equipping them with holistic approach to adapt when they are here and also go to back to their country. So my call here is that there are two things that um, we are offering at AIMS, science communication and women advancement, as it's a global problem that it needs a global solution. Thank you so much. So you have heard uh, an exemplar in the story of two alumni, and there are so many alumni who paved the way for other alumni. And some of you, some of them, they are sitting here with us, and we just need to want to honor them for being the, the paver of the way. So we have two who is Blaze, you have met him last night, Dogmo, and then we also have Ndibuom Pepu, who it's the 2013 AIMS alumni. Thank you. Yes, I'll start with Ndivuo. So Ndivuo, these people are special because they don't just leave AIMS. Every time we have invent, they come. So Ndivuo worked with the South African Reserve Bank previously and now with Standard Bank. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, as Rejoy stated, uh, I'm the warm people. I'm a quantitative analyst currently at the Standard Bank and the Corporate Investment Banking. So last time I came here, it was four years ago, I think 2019. I was a central banker, but then now I'm coming back as an investment banker. So I'm just here to really give you know, a journey of how AIMS transformed my journey, my academic uh, profession. So I came here in 2013. Uh, I think we were the first group to be part of the master's program. So it started off with uh, Professor Perry Green coming to, coming to University of Venda there, you know, introducing us to AIMS. And by the time when he left uh, that hall where he was giving his talk, and then I was like, I'm going there. So I didn't waste time. I came, I applied, and then I got uh, considered. I came here. I think it was on the 5th of uh, January 2013, I came here and then automatically the same day we had an assignment, I was like, whoa. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, th this is, this is going to be a, a, a tough journey and yeah, and then it was a really challenging journey but uh, in the end it was worth it. I know with most of the students who are here, I know you are really complaining about the pressure. You said, no, this is too much, this is too much. But um, let me tell you this, this is how it's supposed to be. The moment when you exit that door, when you say you are done, you will be competitive to be fitted to fit in in different environment. So for me, when I left here, I went back to my home institution at the University of Venda. I served as a junior lecturer for three and a half years, and that's where I get to network with a lot of students. So between the period of 2015 and 2023, I think I referred around about 11 students who came to to Ames to really, you know take what I take, what I took from here when I was a student. So, you know, AIMS is more like, you know, when we were growing up, we used to go out, uh, there will be like a bar well in a room, you're playing outside and then there's gonna be sugar there. So you play, you play outside, you go there and then take some sugar. So AIMS was like that for me. It's more like, yeah, it's a bowl of sugar. So I just didn't want that sugar for me to really just go and take and, and taste and taste. But however, I refer many, many people from our my community, because you know, we come up from a very disadvantaged community, a rural area, 
and then at least when this student comes here, they come here, then they get exposed to a lot of uh, different things, and then when they leave here, they go out there. Some of them, who, those who I, rec I recommend, then they are already back in academics, they are teaching. Some of them, they are with me, they in the industry and the corporate, then they are doing amazing things, and it all started here, it aims. And then one thing which I can really even put to majority, many of the students who are here to say, you see, AIMS is making you to be, you know, recognized, and they don't just let that to release it with you. Make someone else to be seen. Are we together, the students? Yes. So please, uh, that's, you know, I just didn't want it to really, t there's a lot that I can, t I, can, I, talk, I can talk about, but overall, you no, know, AIMS really make me to be a well-rounded problem solver. You go there, different uh, environment there, you will blend in, you will adapt, you will become a solution to many problems. And I know most of the even students who are here, when you exit this pro program, I'm telling you, you will be competitive. You will really make change out there. Uh, thank you very much for, for that you know, short uh, time that I've been given. I don't want to waste a lot of time. I was, I was told I will have three minutes in there. But you know, with the students, like you are very close to my, even yesterday when we were, when we were not working, it was like, I try to really go down and make sure that I talk to some of the students. Some of them really, they were so, you know, welcoming and they, were, they wanted to hear my story. What is it, the, what, what is it uh, for us when we leave this environment? And I'm telling you, the more you make yourself, you know, useful, equi equitable, you will really make, uh, find a space out there and then you're gonna make a difference. And Africa needs you, South Africa needs you, the world needs you. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, uh, Dr. Guy Blaise Ndongmo, uh, a graduate from Stellenbosch University. I'm uh, registered as a professional natural scientist in the field of mathematical sciences. I'm currently working as a probability safety assessment analyst at Quebec Nuclear Power Stations. Uh, one day, I was, uh, when I was completing my nuclear engineering program, we were inside the simulator and, uh, and during the evolution. And uh, something, I mean, uh, something happened, and then uh, there was a panic in the team. And then uh, there was alarm going on in the simulator everywhere, and there was panic. And uh, me knowing the correlation that, that exists. Now I asked uh, my, uh, my colleague who was on the secondary side, his name is Jamil, uh, what is the turbine, what's the turbine power? He said to me it's 80%. And then I look at the reactor power, the reactor power was 100%. There was a panic. Me knowing the correlation between the, the turbine power and the, and, the, and, the con, and the condenser pressure, I turned around and asked him, go and check the condenser vacuum. And he checked out where there was a the problem there. But at the end of uh, the, 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 the evolution, uh, it was successful. And uh, there's what, there was a tears coming out of me. I turned around and wiped it off. I wiped it off because I was remembering where I come from. In back, the background in pure mathematics. It was a huge transformation. How does it happen from pure mathematics to a nuclear analysis, both performing at such level in the nuclear industry? I, uh, this happened through uh, what I call uh, the machine of transformation, that is EMS. In that machine of transformation, that is EMS, I, uh, I acquire a, uh, a, a, a EMS has a, a, a well-designed, uh, a well-designed tailored um, uh, cutting edge uh, uh, program, and that program produce in that program produce in me a, a excellent uh, produce in me excellent. Um, Produce a mean excellent, ex excellent transferable skill. Those transferable skills are, for example, the science communication that uh, uh, Rich just present here now, and then the uh, pro program, uh, uh, excellent programming skill, um, the problem solving, and critical thinking. And uh, 
and from, from there, I mean, out of Ems, uh, I was, uh, I, I had a hope uh, with boldness and without fear to face the future. I know that the future belongs to me. With that mindset up, I started my PhD at Stellenbosch University. I complete my PhD within three years, and then I get a position at the nuclear analysis at ESCOM. In the, in the nuclear industry landscape, we still have, we have that, that, uh, that transferable skill, skill still uh, propagating in. We have the term, uh, teamwork, we have our time management, we have uh, uh, science communication or regulatory body. You're gonna be dealing with also with community, with problem affecting them. Yeah, then, yeah, and, uh, and, then, from, and then from there, um, so yeah, that was uh, my, my, uh, my, my journey as, uh, a, as, as we went through FOMs, that transformation from pure mathematics to nuclear analysis, the, the, the transformation is that, it's that uh, uh, machine of transformation that I call as a M's, our M's that we are here today. And uh, I've, I'm very grateful for that. And then also want to say is an opportunity uh, to say thank you uh, to M's for the, for the funding that they provide me to, for, my, uh, for my first year PhD uh, at the Stellenbosch University. And I say thank you to the DAD for the two years funding that they provide for me for my uh, PhD and exchange program at Giesen University in Germany. Thank you very much. Um, I want to um, say a few words on behalf of all the AIMS uh, centers, the entire AIMS network, and I'll skip um, many, many slides. Um, um, and I'll, I'll finish with uh, two things that AIMS want to do. And if you're a mathematician, you're going to shoot me. If you're a physicist, you're also going to shoot me. <laughs> we want to create energy. This is, this is physically impossible. You know that you cannot create. But as, as an institute, we want to create energy. As an institute, we also want to go to infinity and beyond for our students. This is also mathematically impossible. And as an uh, institute across Africa, um, our wish is that for the next 10 years, we really do the impossible, whether it's physically impossible or mathematically impossible. Nelson Mandela, who was our first democratic president, said, everything in life seems impossible until it is done. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for AIM South Africa team for sharing your unique offering. And we'll go now for lunch. Is it no? Oh, my problem. <laughs> so you're not excited for lunch now? Okay, I'm sorry about that. So we will now move to AIM Senegal. <laughs> I'll be the lunch in any case. So. <laughs> <laughs> right, so. Thank you very much. So let me just take the slides. I think what happened to all of you. So yeah, so it is, a, it is an honor once more to be here. Uh, well, it will be very difficult for me really to talk after the mother center has been presented. Uh, Senegal is the first-born center, right? So, the second center. But in my culture, there are two things that characterize the first-born and the last-born. So the last-born is usually someone who is clever, but very stubborn. <laughs> the first-born are, in general, considered responsible people. <laughs> 
So this way or this way? Ah, OK. So I didn't know that there was these interesting things. So uh, well, so probably Neil should have, uh, should remember this period. Uh, so where uh, he traveled to Senegal and meet uh, great scientists who meet the president of Senegal, the president of Laiwad, who was a scientist, a very brilliant politician and a Pan-Africanist also. And uh, he declared that Ems Senegal est une fondation d'utilité publique. So uh, this is something that he believed really uh, because most of the times the politicians, I'm sorry if there are many here, they don't really respect you know, their words when they give promises in front of the televisions and so on. But he did, in fact, in, uh, he did. And, and, and later, at that time, I was doing my postdoc uh, in Germany, Humboldt postdoc, and I was visiting the Institute for Advanced Studies in, 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 in Princeton. And uh, so I checked the newspapers in Senegal, and I see that, in fact, they were doing the advertisement of M Senegal, like a center which is uh, uh, training the brightest African students, you know. And I, and I was having exactly the same dream that what I was seeing in the Institute for Advanced Studies and exactly what was happening, what was going to happen in Senegal. But even until that time, I was still uh, not thinking that I returned to Senegal, but uh, in fact, it happened, and I get stuck, uh, and I don't believe that I live again. <laughs> so, uh, what is the way, okay. Yes, yeah, so, M Senegal is situated in Bour. So many of you have been in Bour, probably. Who has been in Bour? Um, yeah, just raise your hand. No, Neil, no, you have not been to Mbour. <laughs> yes, yeah, so it is, it, is in the, it is in the west of, 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 of Senegal, so with, in a place which is, called it, which is called the Small Coast. And uh, so, the main, uh, so the main activities of the city is tourism, fishing, and peanut processing. It is uh, 80 kilometers from Dakar, a very nice city. Uh, very friendly people live there, and it is, has like 250,000 uh, people. And it is now very close to the international airport, which is called it Airport Jazz. And now it takes you like 40 minutes to reach the center from the airport. But then, uh, what is how these things you know, having, uh, you know, all this city with these activities, and we want to build uh, an institute in this place. You know, most of the times in these cities, what they know is university or school, but it's very hard for them to understand institute, mathematics, it's quite strange. But even in this, the M in the STEM is quite important, which means mathematics. I don't know why, why do they say STEM. They could just say mathematics in any case. <laughs> because, well, it's... So, something interesting in this city is that now maybe you have seen, if you are traveling in Europe maybe, or maybe anywhere, you will see maybe in the newspaper that they are talk, talking about boats that reach Spain or Italy, where there are many migrants and so on. Most of these boats are these boats are coming from this city, Mbour. The youth they are taking these boats because they really think that there is no hope in Africa. And I am saying they think because it's not in fact the case. There is a lot of hope in Africa. There is a lot of resources in Africa. And therefore, not only the M is important, but I consider now the STEM is important. Because our training is not only about mathematics, but also we try to give back what the students does and what we do all the time to the community to teach the youth in Bur about only, uh, I'd say again, these uh, courses about leadership, about you know, entrepreneurship and all of this. Just to help the student to build, to know that in fact they can. Probably the way things are hidden, it's almost like research, but it is there, in fact, exists. So, uh, 
who is doing this? Uh, so this is our team. You see, I am the most relaxed, <laughs> as always. And uh, we have the, our very serious academic uh, director here, Dr. Kura Balde, who is uh, special, specialized in biomathematics. Very serious, of course. And uh, this beautiful team uh, who are trying to change uh, the face of Mbou from tourism, from all of this to science. And now, if you check in Wikipedia, you check m the city of Mbour, there is something that is highlighted, and uh, which is that, in fact, it is a city of blah, 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 and there is, it is, n it is known because the Institute for Mathematical Sciences in Senegal is there. I didn't do it, really. <laughs> So we are trying to change things. And what is interesting here is, well, this is in fact need more clapping hands because we are in fact 50% of women that stuff. So this is, this is more important than the others. Oh, okay, so living in Ems, uh, it's, uh, so we all talk, we know about Ems, it's a 24 hours learning. But in order to be a 24 hours learning, in order to be, uh, you must uh, really be in a family, unless you are in a prison. You must need to be living like a family. And in fact, it's that family that we are building. So most of the times we call team, but most of, in general, it's not a team, we are really a family. And who are the people who can make this possible? These are uh, two groups of people. So the first are the lecturers. Some of them are here. I know some of them who are here who have been talked at M Senegal and probably many other centers and also the tutors. So the tutors are also those who really spend their time, their energy, teaching those students, translating the courses from French to English, from English to French, trying to do their best for the students really to grasp what the lecturers are saying. The lecturers in general stays for three weeks, but the students sometimes they need more because they need to know in order to prepare also their career, their future careers. And if you see the statistics since 2011, all, this, all the tutors that we had, some of them are recommend, were recommended by lecturers. Some of them came from the Perimeter Institute some of them are also applying directly, but in any case, they have very uh, interesting journey at times. Oh, sorry, this is uh, to go in this other direction. Right, so what is interesting about EMS, uh, well, um, all the EMS centers, it's their programs. And there is, a, there is one, one important thing that we, we, we always keep, we want to keep, we want to preserve. It's what we call the EMS regular program, which was born here in EMS South Africa, probably in this building. And this is something very important that we keep because we need researchers, we need people who think, we need people who contribute in mathematics. And this is an interesting program uh, which trained many, you know, most of these, all these alumni who are here, in fact, it is really the 10 month program, which is the most interesting program. In 2015, we developed another program, which is called the COP program, and uh, which is a program of 18 months, which is, uh, uh, comes with employability, uh, at the same time, but specialized in big data and computer security. So when we started doing this program, uh, after the first graduates, we tried to find places where we place our students. It was very hard because most of the companies at that time, they really didn't know why we are doing this. And when we are talking about master students, they really didn't understand in fact all this, uh, what these students can be used for. After the students, we tried to put them, in fact, we were paying even for their internship. Later, we were receiving thousands of comments. You should give these courses to the students. So each 
you know, company, industrial companies want us to give. But under the leadership of Barry Green, I think he's not here today, uh, as the chief academic officer, he said we are an academic institute. We cannot train for each company a student. It's not possible. We really keep our line as academics and we teach our students, we give them also employability skills and so that they can contribute in different companies. But more interesting, in 2019, after the COVID-19, some companies, they called us, like Institute Pasteur. Do you have data scientists? We really need data scientists. <laughs> So, because it was the time where we every, everybody understood that, in fact, AI, computer security, and data science is something that is really coming very valuable in the future. So, in 2019, uh, the master, the M Senegal Master Program uh, has been accredited by the Senegalese National Quality Assurance Authority. Authority, this is something, in fact, which is not that easy because most of the universities, which was born like 50 years ago, in fact, many of their master program or bachelor program that didn't have this accreditation. And you can check in the websites of the ANACSIP, uh, really. So this is very important, and it give us, uh, gives us uh, the opportunity of the student to be taken at the uh, PhD directly with the EMS degree. So 2012, so, um, the AMI, the African Master in Machine Intelligence, started at EMS uh, under the leadership of Mustafa Sisse. So I cannot tell more about AI. You know better than me because you have heard about talks about the AI. And, uh, and, and, uh, and we are uh, a network of centers, and our collaboration can only make, uh, bring big changes uh, in, in, in Africa. So um, let me just quickly give you some very few numbers uh, about uh, our alumni who are coming from more than 30 different, in fact, countries. And uh, so in total, in fact, we have six, more than 600 uh, students trained and 30% of women. So the Graduate Corps program is a very interesting program because it has more women. 42%, it is very rare in, in a master program in the, in, at the international level to reach this percentage. And also the, the, the army program and also the regular program. So most of the students, in fact, we are training are staying in the continent. Most of them, in fact, we have some who could maybe stay somewhere in the world, but most of them, they really want to give back to Africa, give back to EMS. And we are receiving now lecturers who are coming without asking any payment, who are EMS alumni, who are coming to share their knowledge in the courses, in also tutoring or any other thing. So, um, oh no, this, uh, I still until now do not understand. The, okay, yes, this is, so, these are, um, so, so let me bring it back, because you know what is interesting also about M. so we, we design our master program, we say this is the product that we want, and we go look for the lecturers, and in doing that we go look for the best lecturers. So it's completely different from the usual university where the mainly the master programs or certain programs are designed thanks to the using the, 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 the local knowledge, and this is what we don't do, we look for the knowledge wherever it is in the world. So, one of our alumni who is from Ghana, then uh, as you see, who is uh, uh, now um, working at AI for Science, and uh, so she had this very, in, very kind of difficult experience when she was in Senegal. Uh, so, but they really uh, did their best uh, in this situation, in this, surrounded by their family, which is the local family, the M Senegal family that I was talking about, because otherwise it would be very hard, you know, to, to, to succeed in this difficult moment. And now she's a, a data science and an automation expert. So this is what we are, when we, reach, when we have these comments, we are really proud of what we are doing. 
So another one who did the regular master program, who is uh, now an associate professor at the University of Kess in Senegal. Uh, so he was graduated at Ems Senegal in 2024, and he got the DAD fellowship working with the German research chair. I was the German research chair. <laughs> <laughs> And yeah, so, but I didn't uh, put him here because uh, I was his PhD supervisor, no, really. I put him here because he did a really great job and he was offered the Abel, the, the, the Ebony Prize for the, for, for, his, for the best PhD in 2018, really. So this was mainly the reason, but not because of <laughs> uh, There are, also two uh, very, also very important alumni who traveled with us. Uh, so Jay, who is uh, um, an engineer in natural language processing, working in Lengo AI. So he's uh, working in natural language processing and also Janet, Janet who is working in the International Court for Research Institute. Ah, okay, so she, in any case, they come with their posters and they share their experience and what they do. So I encourage you please to talk to them and uh, discuss with them. They really do incredib incredible jobs in where they are. Uh, so about research, uh, so uh, we have uh, many uh, researchers at EMS, and just to highlight uh, that we have the German research chair, uh, Dr. Mohamed Si, who is from Mauritania, who have been, uh, uh, who did his PhD in France, and his postdoc at Imperial College of London. And uh, we also have uh, the EMS CNRS research chair, uh, Ludovic Rifort, who was the uh, former director of SIMPA. So our research focus is may, are mainly so PDEs, geometric analysis, you know, subliminal geometry, optimal transformation, biomathematics, and physics mechanics. So, and uh, we have, in fact, luckily, I would say, uh, because otherwise, uh, if we were not at EMS, we would not probably be able to get all these interesting prizes. But, uh, you know, research, uh, sometimes I usually say research is very uh, jealous, you know, even with your partner, so it's, 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 it's jealous and, and, and you really need an environment to be able to do, to focus, to concentrate, and this is what we, this is what we offer at EMS. Something that makes also the research at EMS uh, quite interesting is the German cooperation that we have with EMS. And uh, within these cooperations, which is uh, funded by the German Ministry of, uh, of Higher Education and Research through the Alexander von Humboldt Foundation and the German Academic Exchange Service, known as DAD, so we really uh, did the great things uh, in collaboration with this other centers in collaboration with the local universities, international universities. We really trained many, many people. We develop uh, research visiting programs, you know, research in pairs. We develop public lectures. So we, we, we really have lecturers also that we share even with the local universities to provide public lectures there. So I think this is a very important collaboration that we have. And um, also, the cooperation between this, uh, the, the universities, whether it is Frankfurt, in ZMT, also in Bielefeld, in Chemnitz, and this allows us, in fact, to bring many, many, many people in Moor. So we are changing, in fact, the face of Moor. The, the tourism now is, will become, for sure, scientific, <laughs> not beach anymore. <laughs> So uh, I need to share this uh, also with you. Uh, so this is our future plan. And uh, so we, we have discussed with uh, funders who are really willing to 
fund this project, a construction project that we want to do in our land, which has a land title and situated exactly in Bur inside the center. And we start, we want to start with a very, with, a, with the student, in fact, uh, campus, and then enlarge the academic campus. So this is our dream, which will, become, which will come true. So as uh, Ulrich said about Nelson Mandela, in any case, it will, it will, be, it will come true. So it will come in any case. <laughs> and the horizon is 2025. I give you, the, I give you rendezvous. <laughs> So I am going to stop the video. I think you have seen enough. Or maybe you, are, you will see it in real in any case. Maybe that would be nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I made a slide for our partners, uh, which is always important to thank them, because now we are in a world where collaboration is the key. It's very important. Otherwise, you, you cannot succeed in any case. You cannot be alone. The places where also, who are also recruiting our students, uh, not only now for internship, but really places where, which are recruiting our students and uh, which are, in fact, all around the world, not only in Africa, but uh, in many different places. They are located in many different places and mainly specialized in, in the date, in the ICT sites. So um, now I come with my last slide. I think my time is over. Uh, yes, so just from the sentence that Frank Morgan said yesterday, which I think need repeat also, but you stole my idea. <laughs> <laughs> but in any case, I, I, I rewrite it here that in fact, what Frank Morgan said, that circular festival bringing science and Africa together, nothing could be more important for the future of our planet. And uh, I, the time that you are clapping your hands, you please uh, enjoy also our, the, the, our daily life as a family. Thank you very much. Senegal, and we really wish you well, and we Wish you well with your dream and for your dream to come true. So now we move to Ames, Rwanda. Uh, our Ames, Ghana, as I said, they will present after lunch. Uh, over to you, Ames, Rwanda. Thank you. So um, good afternoon. You, you may ask yourself if uh, Ems Rwanda is uh, the second born, because <laughs> as Mustafa said, Ems uh, uh, Senegal is the first born of, uh, of the network after the mother <laughs> the center, Ems um, uh, South Africa. Um, so actually, Ems Rwanda is among the, the last born. I, I say among because uh, the last born will present also, and I see them here. So it's just about, uh, um, yeah, we, we have swapped with uh, EMS uh, Ghana. Um, so I will start. That one. Nothing is happening. So there is. Um, a video. That one. Yes. There is a, a video. Yeah. Ah, okay. So we have to. <laughs> the presentation is loading. Uh, Yes, as they are loading, uh, maybe let's just start um, about Ems Rwanda. Uh, we has been uh, created. We have started our operations in uh, 2016. And uh, so it was at that time 
It was uh, created uh, after, of course, Ems South Africa, then Ems uh, Senegal, Ems uh, Ghana, Ems Cameroon, and Ems Tanzania, which uh, was uh, still operating at that time. So Ems Rwanda was like uh, the sixth uh, born of, uh, of the family. And um, yeah, um, so we are located in uh, the city of Kigali, uh, which I invite you to, uh, to visit <laughs> when it's possible. Very nice city, we'll be very pleased to have you around. And um, we are organizing the, the normal program of uh, any other M's as any other M's. Uh, we have uh, the master in mathematical sciences uh, with uh, different streams, including the um, uh, climate. Uh, we used to have a specific stream on climate uh, science. We, of course, have uh, uh, data science. We have people doing uh, uh, pure math. Uh, and um, we, we also had the opportunity to host the first uh, cohort of the machine intelligence, the master, the African master in, uh, in machine intelligence for two years. So we started it at EMS Rwanda, and uh, then that program moved to EMS. Uh, we implemented it to M uh, in EMS Ghana, and now it's, uh, it's being implemented uh, at EMS Senegal. Uh, of course, uh, we, uh, we, we also have an in-house research uh, center. Uh, is it now working? Um, let me know when it's uh, ready. <laughs> um, we, we also have an in-house research center with uh, two researchers, and they are here, and I know that they will be presenting uh, on Thursday. I see uh, Jan Azla there, and uh, Abebe, who is a uh, who was uh, around here. Yeah, he's there. <laughs> yeah, so they will be presenting their activities uh, on Thursday. But in, the, in um, the meantime, I know that there are a number of um, uh, posters here around. So uh, whenever you have uh, the opportunity, please go and uh, interact with the researchers' uh, uh, present, uh, posters who are there. And um, maybe as I'm trying to, <laughs> um, as they are making the technology ready, maybe I would like to call uh, the academic director uh, of EMS Rwanda, <laughs> also who is with me here, Blaise. Um, when we are uh, preparing that um, presentation, there is something that we're discussing is about the um, um, how EMS Rwanda contributed to uh, also to change the image of uh, mathematics science in the country. And he's uh, actually uh, at EMS Rwanda since the beginning. And uh, maybe he can say something and uh, tell a story about the interaction of uh, EMS Rwanda and how everything else, EMS Rwanda also contributed to grow, uh, to help growing the mathematics. Thank you, Sam. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Blaise Chapunda. I'm the academic director of EMS Rwanda. Uh, from the inception of this center since 2016, uh, before EMS came to Rwanda, uh, mathematics, I would say, would be, uh, was a bit, uh, something strange was uh, uh, so strange to a lot of people. I remember uh, the first year with uh, our students, our M MSc students, we visited a, a secondary school and uh, our students we was, were giving a talk, a motivator, motivational talk to students to motivate them to, to study mathematics or physics, mathematical science in general, when they, 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 
they complete the high school, and uh, they said, no, we cannot do mathematics or physics because uh, I don't want to be a teacher. And I said, this is not the only job you can do with mathematical science. And uh, I'm happy that uh, today, after seven years, uh, Ames has contributed a lot to change the narrative. Uh, I can, for instance, today, we have uh, success stories from uh, our graduates. Uh, we have graduates who are working as data scientists at National Bank of Rwanda, at least four of them. Uh, bank of Kigali, which is the largest uh, commercial bank in, uh, in Rwanda. Uh, National Institute of Statistics Rwanda. We have uh, graduates who are working as uh, many uh, officers in many NGOs in Rwanda, just to name a few. So this is to say that uh, EMS has really impacted, uh, has really contributed a lot to, 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 to inform the youth about what can be done with mathematical sciences. So I would like also to mention, the, of course, the building of pipeline of mathematical scientists in, uh, I think from, uh, uh, if I don't count Ames graduates, the University of Rwanda, which is the only national uh, official university, the, the, the only national university, uh, has graduated like uh, maybe about 60 MSc in uh, mathematical sciences, but in just seven years we have increase the number a lot. We, we have uh, produced like about 300 uh, graduates in the mathematical sciences, which is good. And uh, some of them are already completed a, a PhD and uh, are lecturing now at the University of Rwanda or elsewhere. So, so this is something. And I would like also to mention that Ames has helped a lot to build a a national team, Olympiad team now. So Rwanda last year uh, 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 had a team during the Pan-African uh, Mathematical Olympiad in mathematics, and uh, they even won some, some medals, so which is uh, <laughs> something <laughs> to mention. And uh, yeah. to, to add on that, um, so among the four top teams, we had two EMS uh, countries, so which are namely Rwanda and EMS South Africa. <laughs> During that uh, Mathematic uh, Olympiad, uh, which, brings, um, which brought together 32 countries of uh, Africa to, to compete on the young. Is it ready now? Math is a miracle. I think yes. it is there. Okay. You yeah. see, it's telling us something very deep about the world, the fact that math exists. When we have our young people who are very well trained in mathematics, in science in general, we ensure we have strong assets to develop the continent. It's about uh, investing in young, um, in African youth with mathematical senses and bringing them together and providing them the state-of-the-art training in mathematical senses. At Ames, I learned programming. It was my gap, and then I, I maximized my time to fill that gap. They helped me a lot. I remember they even paid the rent for the whole period I stayed at Ems, and they were allowing me to go breastfeeding in between. I remember the first day I reached that Rwanda Living Authority. They had some challenges to open some big data sets. Using the skills I acquired from Ems, like um, programming, I used R, and then I opened that data set. I showed them. Uh, they, they were very impressed. I've been among the first court of a cooperative masters. What led me to apply and study at Ames Rwanda is the quality of education. So 
aims exposes students to the different skills. That's one. And it's up to the student or it's up to the alumni to select his or her, her way, I mean, her way to go. And when it comes to the impact, I can say, let's say you have been exposed to the different skills and you choose the data science as your career, career way. And then you have learned a lot from M's, then it's up, I mean, then it is a time to apply what you have learned. So the impact, out of, the impact of M's alumni is to use the data, the institution data set, different data set, to mine the insightful information hidden from that data, then to advise the policy making. As a CEO, uh, making decisions without exactly knowing what's happening on the ground. So what uh, concretely uh, the AIMS uh, student have helped us done is to put together the information in a dashboard that is very simple and you are able to see what's happening in branches and this has enabled us even to have people more accountable. I want to affirm that this training is really in line with our uh, environment and climate change policy and uh, is also in line with our commitment to train more professionals uh, both in private, public and civil society organization. Uh, I want to encourage uh, REMA and EMS to, to keep this partnership really and uh, extend such training to many other experts. The first edition of IGA Coding Camp 2022. On the first day we reached here, we were in this hall. So they were like, we are going to be the next day. Um, IGA Coding Camp. The experience I've got, I've got to train my brain to work and to, to solve a problem so quickly. We learned Python. I got to get introduced to the basics of Python. Yeah, and it was interesting. Emu zirero yamfashije kugera ku nzozi zanjye. Mbona ndi mwari mu mwiza baramfasha, baramugura ibigendanye na assessment ku muntu ategura abana bagakunda isomo, uburyo ukundisha umwana isomo, no umwigisha umeze nk'intare mu ishuri, ukishima umwana akibona mu isomo icyo gihe abana ntangira kujya mbajyana mu marushanwa ya EMC abana baratinyuka nange ndatinyuka you have seen how Rwanda have participated in the last pan africa month olympiad winning nine medals and becoming the fourth among 32 countries who participated i'm overwhelmed with the gratitude for the opportunity the Rwanda Match Olympiad and the more trainings bestowed upon me during just context. They were catalysts for growth and empowerment. And we hope that the success of this edition will inspire next year and the year after and for all future PAMOs. So uh, after that present that uh, uh, video, we I have also like uh, a more traditional presentation, but uh, we yeah, uh, we try to go uh, faster on that. Uh, so that slide, um, as Urigo was saying, Siakula is about growing not only about AMS but also about all the continent. So it was also important to show uh, where we are in the specific ecosystem of, uh, of Rwanda, mathematical sciences ecosystem. So um, as uh, Blaise said, 
there is a one public university, which is the University of Rwanda. We have graduated uh, uh, 49,000 uh, gradu uh, uh, from uh, establishments to 2020. So those are the, the statistics that we got from them. And regarding the master in science, in mathematical science, science uh, those are the numbers. So you, you, you can see uh, how EMS the contributed uh, in increasing also the number. So yeah, uh, that is a more network, that is a more network um, figures uh, where we can see the number of uh, people graduated from Ames. Um, but beyond that, uh, this number, uh, it's important to look at the impact. When we see, for example, that we have graduated over 3,200, 3, and considering that in some universities, um, we have uh, lecturers, we have uh, teaching assistants who are our EMS alumni, and each of them is training tens of uh, a ten or so, or even more, other students. So actually, beyond this number, I think that when we look at the the impact, we should even add <laughs> one more or two zeros. So those numbers are what uh, we have graduated uh, across the network, but the impact is, of course, much, much uh, bigger. For EMS Rwanda itself, 400, over 400 graduates that you can compare to uh, the previous numbers that I showed you, but it's not that we are saying, oh, that is what EMS has done, but that's what we have done together because we are also benefiting from the support of the University of Rwanda in terms of uh, lecturers. They are uh, teaching at M. So it's really our um, uh, common uh, success. And um, among those uh, 400, the, the students are coming from uh, 36 uh, countries. And uh, we are yeah, also, also very proud on uh, the gender aspect. Of course, we can do more. And uh, in our strategic plan, uh, we have uh, that uh, objective to, to go much more uh, beyond and uh, have uh, at least 50% have the equality. Yeah, like uh, my colleague of EMS uh, Senegal, uh, said we have uh, also uh, tutors and uh, lecturers coming from all across the continent and uh, the research contribution. Um, yeah, there is uh, that program of teacher training which is very important in terms of building the pipeline and with that program we could uh, train over 7,000 teachers and we have, uh, you, you have uh, followed in the video one of the teachers giving uh, the testimony. And that program is uh, really impactful in terms of uh, um, raising awareness uh, uh, and uh, making sure that we increase the number of young boys and girls who, are, uh, who can pursue further STEM studies. And uh, because EMS is at uh, the master program is at the end of the pipeline. So if we don't make sure that at the earlier stage in the secondary schools and so on, we, we have more young people, boys and girls who, can, who are motivated to pursue STEM studies, uh, we, we cannot make it. Yeah, um, we have the master training, the normal master training, we have the uh, research, we have the outreach program with the teacher training program, and there is also another component that we have been implementing at EMS, as we have uh, uh, seen in the video, is what we call the um, professional training. And we have a few examples uh, that we have implemented in our centers in the past years. Yeah. Uh, the video was <laughs> uh, short, but uh, it was presenting all those programs. Um, yeah, the future is uh, M Senegal. <laughs> we are all um, 
in the process of building our own premises. And that is very important also for our sustainability. So um, for the next um, celebration, I don't know in how many years, if uh, it happens in Rwanda, for sure, we will be happy to host you in our own uh, building. So this place is called Kigali Innovation City. We, um, we got a donation from the Rwanda government of uh, six hectares lands, uh, which is uh, very, very uh, yeah, sufficient. And even we have enough space to really build all the facilities that we want at uh, Ems Rwanda. So currently, um, we, there are al already some institutions we have built there, uh, Carnegie Mellon University Africa. There is also a center of excellence from University of Rwanda. There is also uh, the African Leadership University, which is also uh, um, already uh, present at this site. And AMS will be uh, among those uh, institutions. And we really, with this uh, setting, it will also encourage you know, the synergy between the different institutions uh, to, to collaborate and to leverage our mutual presence. And um, I just want to, to go back a bit um, when we look, we look at the numbers. I think uh, as Neil uh, was uh, explaining in his uh, speech that AMS is um, also about bridging the divide on the continent. And I really strongly believe uh, that we are building something which is much more uh, beyond only science, beyond mathematics. I will give you an example. Myself, I, was, uh, I did my, my studies in, uh, in Europe, in Belgium. I, I started my undergrad and so on. And that was in the middle of, um, in the mid of uh, 80s. <laughs> so I'm not, uh, so, and at that time, there was a program, maybe some of you know that program, which is called Erasmus. And that program was about mo um, the student mobility from one country to another. Uh, so at the university where I was studying uh, in Belgium, we had with uh, students coming from uh, Spain, from Portugal, and so on. And when I was reflecting about that program, I think those universities, those countries also, they had, a, they, uh, they, they had good universities. But why uh, was the, um, uh, that program was um, like pushing, like um, uh, facilitating that mobility? I think it was also about making sure that the youth of those countries will know each other, that they can, be, they can know that they can work together. And what EMS is doing in Africa, having people from different countries living together, studying together, is uh, something great that for me allows people of different countries who may not be, you know, not necessarily be considering themselves as friends, but at the end, they become friends. And when you have friends, you know that you can talk to each other, you can work together. And finally, I will say that EMS is really building peace in Africa. And thank you so much, Neil, for that initiative. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, now I can say we.
<laughs> Thank you so much for these inspiring stories of how AIMS is transforming the lives in the African continent.